Mukarimaka. <laughs> Mukarimaka is a phrase I learned here in Osaka in the local dialect, which means uh, hello, greeting. But it literally means, uh, are you making money? Which seems appropriate for DevCon. So DevCon, are we making money? <laughs> um, so many of you know me as uh, the co-founder of Wireline, the P2P application network. Tomorrow we have a, a big demo with our CEO, Rich Burden. Don't miss it tomorrow at 12. But this is a story about what happened when we started looking into using Libra on our application network. So crypto's come a long way. Seems like everybody wants to be involved in it, including this guy, Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> now, obviously, there's a lawsuit coming. Um, so what a sea change for crypto. I mean, really, um, it's entered the mainstream. And you know, who would have thought in the days of Bitcoin that we might have a, something that looks like a cryptocurrency reach perhaps 4 billion people. And so I think it's a, there's a moment here where everybody working in crypto should feel uh, some sense of gratification of the work that we've been doing, the research, the open source, finally paying off into something that can go mainstream. So I'm going to say something that I think might not go well with this crowd, but I think Libra is going to become the de facto currency of the internet. Now, that might just be because of the sheer reach of Facebook and its partners. And they're going to be able to reach between all of the association members around 4 billion people. So anything they do is going to be relevant. But I actually think that there's a lot to like uh, about Libra. I think the stablecoin design is quite compelling especially for developing nations. So, and I'm surprised actually a lot of people in crypto don't know the details of this. Um, what Libra is doing is it's creating basically a currency fund. So a basket of currencies where one Libra gives you redemption on that basket of currencies. Um, and that's a really compelling store of value for people around the world that live in governments that don't uh, have you know, um, sustainable financial and fiscal policies. And um, what's interesting about this, again, is a historical moment for a non-governmental currency that's a blend of other currencies. It's not a new idea. You know, IMF, SDRs, and John Maynard Cades with Bancor, we, we've had uh, this idea for a long time. So this is really exciting. Another thing that's going to come to the mainstream through this platform is this idea of trust-minimized financial automation, so smart contracts. Um, and it could become widely spread uh, through this association. So that's the good part. Now, everybody here, I think, knows the problems uh, with how Facebook is deploying this. So the design of Libra is effectively of, as a, it's designed as a bank, as a, as a full reserve bank. It takes deposits from end users. That goes into a trust. That trust yields interest. That interest gets paid out to the investors of the bank the Libra Association members. And, so, and the Libra Association is kind of a misnomer. It's not a not-for-profit thing. Associations in Switzerland are basically LLCs, the equivalent of LLCs in the US. Um, and what gets worse about this bank is that it has a distinction of having the ethics of Uber, the censorship of Visa, and the privacy of Facebook. These are the people that are going to be making decisions about this global bank. And Everything that we understand about the Libra Association so far leads us to believe that governance decisions are going to be made only by the investors in the bank. So, and this only starts to get worse when you start thinking about the scale of this bank um, and it possibly being too big to fail, because it being a being in a supranational jurisdiction, you know, in, in Switzerland uh, and, and other countries, who's going to bail out this bank if it runs into trouble, for example? in a regime of negative interest rates. What does this bank look like? So lots of governance problems there. And how are we as a society trying to solve these governance problems? Um, wrong way. With government solutions. Now, if you feel the same way I do about government solutions, um, I, I don't think that we should hold too much hope for uh, solving this, these issues. 
So I think there are two outcomes that can happen from Facebook engaging with governments. Uh, on one side, Facebook can, is going to engage in regulatory capture. And so the end of that path is the bank too big to fail. And basically, fa Facebook can just go jurisdiction shopping to find you know, a country that can say, uh, give, them, give them a regulation that says, well, this isn't really a bank, although it does bank-like things, and Libra isn't really an investment. It's, it's actually a currency. So th that's the path they're on now, and I think they'll likely get it. Uh, the, other, the other one, which I think, oddly, we have people in the crypto community rooting for, is that we managed to corner Facebook. The government somehow miraculously managed to coordinate and put Facebook into a corner. Um, and then Facebook is going to do something lame like Venmo or WeChat. And I think that that would be a mistake. I think it's a missed opportunity for humanity. But it's worse for crypto because now we're going to have empowered regulators that think they know something about crypto and are going to prevent any project like this from happening again. So how could we steer this to somewhere in the middle or, or on another plane? You know, what, how could we expand this, the, this set of possibilities here? Well, so I went around and spoke to some of my friends in crypto, some of the leaders of, of the crypto projects. And you know, one idea kept coming up, um, which is basically the only tool we have in blockchain governance, um, and it's hard forks. Basically, the state of the art that we have in governance in crypto. Um, now, generally hard forks, I think of them as a prank. And I think a lot of people suggested to fork Libra uh, as a prank. Uh, and sometimes these pranks, can, you can walk away with, with a lot of money. Um, I'm looking at you, uh, Bitcoin Cash. Uh, there's, but if we, if we you know, zoom out, uh, forks are an important feature of open source. It's this very interesting game theoretic mechanic where I have to listen to my community. I have to include their, uh, some of their innovations, their governance, uh, their use cases, lest they fork my code, rebrand it, and, uh, and stop contributing back to me. So soft forks, uh, so rather forks create a kind of soft power between uh, contributors of a, of a network and of, and of code to the original maintainer. So how can we cr use this tool that we have to create a new space for discussion, a new space for innovation, and something that expands the set of stakeholders? So uh, a few of us got together. And look at these wonderful names here. Just, they're all stars in crypto. Uh, these people have given a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to making public good financial platforms work. Um, what did we decide to do? Well, we're going to collect all the people that are excluded from Libra. We're going to fork the Libra code and fork the community and create a new network that we call Open Libra. Yes. So we've been working on this for four months. And for the trolls out there, uh, move your fingers away from the keyboard now. Um, there is no token sale. There is no equity. There's no company behind this. There are no investors. So you can relax. This is all grant funded and funded from personal money of the contributors. So this is time to thank the Interchain Foundation and the good boys at Cosmos for the generous grant to kick this up to the next level. And many thanks to the Wireline and OS coin teams for the resources given to get us started. So what do we want to do? Uh, we intend to lock the door open to Libra. Uh, Libra, as designed, is a walled garden. And I think wall gardens don't work generally in, in software, but they certainly don't work in this new era of financial automation that is trust minimized. Um, I've spoken to Libra Association members, and they have told me, when I asked them directly, can my application be stopped on the Facebook network? And they said, well, we haven't decided that yet. It's a very bad sign. So for anybody that is excluded, locked out, forbidden, there's going to be an open and compatible network. So these are the guarantees we need to provide for that. So the three things that we need to do, and this is how we're going to measure our success. Anyone that's impacted by Libra, 
should participate in its governance. That could be half of the world's population. So half the world's population should participate in governance and have recourse. Two, fintech platforms, smart contract platforms, are gonna produce a lot of value in the coming decades. And we need to let users share in that value in a meaningful way. Three, move smart contract language and smart contracts generally enable new types of business categories. And let's let businesses innovate with it without the risk of their app being stopped. So this is our strategy. This is how we're gonna get those three things. We need a type of technical compatibility and we need a financial compatibility on Open Libra. So the technical compatibility might seem straightforward, but it's not. Uh, we need to get the move language, which there's a lot to like and, and, and our team is very excited about it. We think it would be um, possibly the compatibility layer for all blockchains, it's that good. Uh, but the first thing we need to do is get the move VM to run on a consensus engine that is permissionless. So if you actually go into the code, the Libra code today, the Libra, v, the, the Libra consensus is predicated on all the nodes knowing each other. So that's not gonna work for, for the, the vision that we have. So uh, we need to make some meaningful changes, disassemble VM, the move VM, and, and Libra consensus and reassemble it. Financial compatibility. So technical compatibility is necessary, but not sufficient. We need financial compatibility, meaning if a contract gets moved from Facebook's chain to Open Libra chain, uh, it's not sufficient to just have the contracts work correctly. We need the money to represent the same thing. So the Open Libra coin is going to be a peg to Libra. It's not gonna be a new reserve currency. It's going to be pegged to Libra. Now, this introduces a number of problems. Um, we can't have any dependencies on the Facebook chain meaning we're not gonna be able to do atomic swaps. We can't have a contract on the Facebook chain that is holding all of the deposits, all the collateral for the open Libra chain because that could be uh, cut off at any time. Uh, second constraint we have, uh, Facebook's Libra will grow to a size of, by recent estimates, uh, 10 to $20 trillion worth of uh, Libra circulating on the Facebook network. So, Hypothetically, if Open Libra had 1% of the volume of uh, Libra, Facebook's Libra, that would be 100 or 200 billion dollars worth of Open Libra circulating. There isn't enough crypto in the world to collateralize that in a MakerDAO construction. So, where are we after four months of, of working on this? So, we've had a bunch of deliverables, we've been working quietly. A lot of this is design, architecture, and frankly, invalidation of, of designs. Um, but today, we're actually really happy to announce something that we call uh, movement. So if you go to GitHub, Open Libra, you will see the scaffold, the, the first designs and, and scaffold of what we're calling movement. And that is where we're taking the move virtual machine and creating all the interfaces for it to work on top of Tendermint ABCI. So what does that mean? You'll be able to run a state machine with the MoveVM and the Move Smart Contract Language and use all that tooling, and you're going to be able to get your state replicated through a permissionless consensus and use all the wonderful tools from the Cosmos SDK to be able to create a proof of stake system. So go check that out now and uh, you know, many thanks to Nal, who worked over the weekend to make this happen for us to deliver it. Thank you, Nal. But most of the work going forward, and the work, actually most of the work we've done, frankly, and going forward is gonna be around governance. So everyone working here, we're working on a collective project which is creating financial infrastructure as a public good. And, um, you know, blockchains haven't solved the governance problem. In fact, hard forks seem to be the only thing we have. Um, but there's a superset problem, which is public goods, generally speaking, are unsolved problems in economics and sociology. Um, it, we don't know how to fund, make decisions, maintain a public good without literally having an army behind it. So this is a category of hard problems. Um, but Facebook's decision to do this as a, effectively as a company in Switzerland um, is, you know, is a mistake. They haven't actually shown uh, and in, in the intent or, or possibly 
the intent to understand the problem or to solve the problem. But as, at OpenLibre, we have to do that. So right now, we don't claim to have the answers for governance, but we do claim to understand the problem. If you've seen some of the names up there, these are, these are some of the thought leaders in governance and, and, and public goods. But importantly, how are we going to get this done? The initial partners, the initial owners of the Open Libra governance are important. So today, we're happy to announce, as a governing member of Open Libra, the Red Cross. Um, specifically, the Danish Red Cross. A lot of people don't know this, but the Red Cross works on a lot of financial innovation for uh, the bottom billion to create resiliency in communities um, around the world. Um, for example, they have this wonderful project around community currencies in East Africa. The Red Cross has been around for 160 years, I think. And um, they have this very powerful model all the time, do no harm. That informs all of their decisions. So we've asked them, we've invited them to be our guardrails in our process of formalizing the governance. Help us do no harm. So thanks to Adam Bornstein, our delegate from the Red Cross, for making this happen. So I'm going to wrap up. Does everybody recognize this headline? Anybody? This is the message that was in the first transaction on the Bitcoin blockchain, on the first block. So this is a reminder that crypto came from some very scary economic times. There was this opaque, convoluted, fraudulent, over-engineered financial system that nearly brought the world uh, to go over a cliff. I, was, I remember that time. Um, and so today, sorry to say this to folks in this audience, but it seems like Libra is going to inherit the legacy of Bitcoin. And Libra is going to inherit the legacy of smart contracts. So as a society, are we just doing the same things over and over with new tools? It doesn't have to be that way. So this is an invitation to come help us steer the future of Libra. In Libra, we trust. In Facebook, we don't. If you are a business excluded by Facebook or would like to use it and don't see yourself being able to, you should write Elef Dirios. This is his Twitter handle. Are you a nonprofit and you want to participate in governance? And you want to steer this in the right direction? That's my Twitter on there. And are you a technologist in distributed systems? Lots of neat puzzles for you to work on. You should contact now. Uh, and finally, PayPal, call me. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs>